In the programme this week, the return of the Freeride World Tour, we talk to British professional snowboarder James Stenterford, and the latest edition of Ski and Board is out. Hello and welcome to the Ski Club Snowcast. Now, we're already very excited about this season's Freeride World Tour, one of the biggest spectacles in the snow sports calendar. Here's a little taster of the action from last year. The tour is billed as bringing the best riders and the best mountains together in the ultimate freeride competition. The 2012 competition sees the return of last year's ski winner Aurelien Ducro and three-time snowboard champion Xavier Delarue. Confirmed dates so far include Chamonix in France, Fieberbrunn in Austria, and Verbier in Switzerland, plus a new stage in Roldal in Norway. You can now watch a Snowcast Extra on Ski Club TV from last season's Sam Moritz Leg to give you a taste of what it's like to see the event in resort. There's one British rider who competes on a tour who pulled off a podium finish in Verbier and overall sixth place in the snowboard category. This week we caught up with James Stenterford at the Freeride World Tour press launch. It was a learning process because it was the first full year doing the Freeride World Tour. So there was mountains that I'd never ridden before, um, where I, you know you always feel generally when you get to the bottom of the run that you could have done it better. I was very happy to come third in Verbier and third in, in Fieberbrunn. So I was satisfied, but I feel there's room for improvement. Verbier was a real nerve-wracker for me because being a free rider, it's sort of the pinnacle of a free ride competition. And, you know, I've been free riding for 20 odd years and, and I've always watched that competition. And you obviously you always wonder, you know, how, you know, you think in yourself, I can, I can do that, you know, I can do that. But I'd never had the opportunity to then suddenly stand up there. It was a real, you know, it was, it was one of those personal little goals. And I would have been happy just to get to the bottom of Verbier, and, but to, to get on the podium was, was, a, real, was a real bonus and um, yeah, it was a great end to the season. Best of luck to him this season. You can watch the full interview right now on Ski Club TV. We'll keep you up to date on his progress and bring you the best of the action from the tour here on the Snowcast. Time now to see how things are looking in the mountains with this week's Snowy Roundup. In Europe, the same conditions have prevailed this week. But the great news is that many resorts, especially in the west, should get some snow over the weekend and more in the latter part of next week, with parts of France expected to receive a very welcome change in fortunes. Sierra Nevada, in the southeast of Spain, currently has some of the best overall skiing conditions in Europe. They're reporting a metre of snow on the upper slopes and offer 41 kilometres of skiable terrain with superb conditions higher up. The Warren Smith team have been enjoying conditions in Sass Bay, where a good amount of snow is forecast. Over in Austria, Ischgl saw in their opening weekend a respectable 23 lifts open, thanks to the amazing efforts of the snowmaking and grooming team. It's been reasonably dry in Western America, apart from fresh snow at Timberline, Oregon. Colorado and Utah have both been cold and sunny, helping to preserve the existing conditions. Canada has arguably the best ski conditions of anywhere at the moment. Lots of fresh snow has fallen in the Rockies, so resorts such as Jasper and Banff have excellent skiing on offer. Another barnstorming snow report from George. Keep an eye on the Ski Club snow reports to find out how your favourite resorts are looking. Time now for the next instalment of our skiing tips. If you get cold feet in the mountains, keep watching. There's nothing worse than getting cold feet when you're skiing or boarding. So here's a few tips to minimise the risk. First off, always dry your liners overnight. You can buy things to make that easier, such as this heated fan system, or this one, which also has UV light, which will help to kill off that bacteria. And then on the mountain, you can get elements that go in your boots with a battery pack to control the heat. It's a little element sits under your toes on top of your footbed, controlled by the battery packs, it can very heat through your day, very good, but they can be expensive. Cheaper option, such as this single-use disposable tea bag type affair, 
they're air activated and these can really increase your warmth during the day. That's how to keep your feet warm. Thanks Al. Finally this week, the latest edition of Ski and Board magazine is out now. Here's assistant editor Rosie Barcroft with her sneaky peek inside. Well, Andreas Hofer explores the snows of Crete and makes some very interesting friends along the way. Mark Jones has some great ski tips on how to steer with your inner leg. And Lucy Ullman reviews the Astounding Walking with the Wounded series and also the Walking with the Wounded book. There are a load more articles and some great photography in this issue, so check it out. If you're a Ski Club member, you should have received your copy, and it's also available in all good news agents. That's it for this week's Snowcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you tune in next week. Until then, bye! bye.